So welcome back and this is the second part of Pentagon from the beginning which is going to be about interpretation of Pentagon parameters. So let's get started. In this part I will talk about factors of false findings, enantiomorphism and 10 steps of corneal parameters interpretation. Factors of false findings False findings can be positive and negative. False positives or false abnormal findings they lead to overestimation of clinical findings. False negatives or false normal findings they lead to underestimation of clinical findings. The most common reason of false findings are contact lenses used. As I already said at the beginning of the part 1 presentation, before any pentagram examination, make sure that your patient stopped using contact lenses at least one week before uh, the examination. For example, this patient, uh, in the image of the pentagram you can see, stopped using contact lenses at the day of the examination. That's why anterior sagittal map shows this hot spot in the inferior sector of the cornea. However, elevation maps, front, back, as well as pachymetry map doesn't show any abnormalities. So this is another sample of the patient using rigid uh, gas permeable contact lenses. So A image, this is the immediately after removal of the lens. B image, 16 days after removal of the lens. And C image, this is the change in curvature over the 16 day period. Misalignment. There are patient error misalignment and examiner's error misalignment. Signs of misalignment. QS, abnormal, yellow or red, because normally it should be signed as OK. Keratometry stability. More than 0.3 diopters between captures is a sign of misalignment. Astigmatism dissociation. The normal difference between manifest astigmatism and tomographic astigmatism should be less than one diopter. And usual pupil center coordinates. If X and a Y are more or equal to 0.2 millimeters. Unusual thickness location coordinates. If X and Y of thinness location are more or equal to 0.2 millimeter. Inter-eye asymmetry more or equal to 0.1 mm in coordinates as well as asymmetric patterns on the curvature, elevation or pachymetry maps could be also a, a sign of a misalignment. Let's continue with clinical samples. So this image, this is the misalignment of an eye fixating downward during capturing the cornea. And in this image, the same eye after realignment. So this is a clear sample of patient's misalignment. This is the thickness profiles of the same eye in misalignment situation. And this is the same eye after realignment. And here you can see this interrupted red curve after 6 mm zone. While after realignment, this line is not interrupted and looks absolutely normal. In this slide, you can see a possible misalignment for astigmatic cornea with a vertical symmetric bow tie, astigmatic cornea with symmetric bow tie and skewed radial axis, and horizontal symmetric bow tie. Tear film disturbance. Tear film deficiency as well as tear film excess can also lead to false findings. So here, for example, you can see a four composite refractive map before the dry eye treatment and you can see clearly the irregular surface of the cornea. This is before the treatment and this is the same patient after the treatment when the surface is of the cornea is absolutely smooth and doesn't have any irregularities when you compare to the first image. Tear film excess. The common sign of tear film excess is blue meniscus on the corneal periphery inferiorly. So here you can see clearly the excess tear situation below. And this is a normal situation. Another reason of uh, false findings is large angle kappa or lambda. In this table you can see a few angles which are being formed between eye axis. So angle kappa is being formed between visual axis and pupillary axis and angle lambda is being formed between line of sight and pupillary axis. 
The normal value of angle cup is between 2 and 5 degree. So when it's more than 5 degree, then we consider it as a large angle cup. What are the factors of false findings? Are corneal opacities, pathologies, previous corneal surgeries, bad exposure to the camera due to anatomical features and also pregnancy. Enantiomorphism. Enantiomorphism is the phenomenon in which there is a mirror symmetry between the two eyes in both tomographic shapes and values. This term is very important to study tomographical patterns. When in mirror-shaped corneas some irregularities exist, they may be considered as normal, and those irregularities are when angle kappa is large, symmetric bow time with skewed radial axis, horizontal displacement of the sinus location, skewed hourglass pattern on elevation maps are also considered normal. When the vertical component of angle kappa is large, inferior steep, asymmetric bow tie inferior steep, vertical displacement of the sinus location and skewed hourglass pattern on elevation maps are normal. When both components of angle kappa are large, asymmetric bow tie, skewed radial axis, vertical horizontal displacement of the sinus location, and again skewed hourglass are considered to be normal. Here's some clinical samples of enantiomorphism. Enantiomorphism in curvature maps, in anterior elevation maps, in posterior elevation maps, and in pachymetry maps. And you can see this beautiful a reflection of right eye and the left eye. In this slide I will continue with inter-eye corneal asymmetry score. This score calculation is based on mean anterior and posterior keratometry, thinness pachymetry and thinness location of anterior and posterior elevation maps. So normally the score between 1 and 3 is considered to be normal and in general score of 3 is um, observed in up to 6 to 11 of healthy patients whereas a score of 4 is found in less than 4% of patients without keratoconus. The score of 5 is a characterization of a highly abnormal cornea and only in 1% or less um, it can be um, eyes or patients without keratoconus. 10 steps of corneal parameters interpretation. Those steps were designed with normal, moderate risk and high risk values for decision making in corneal refractive surgery. Make sure that you start your evaluation with four maps refractive. Start with anterior k-mean. Normal value of uh, anterior k-mean should be less than 48 diopters. Step 2. Define sinus location. The normal sinus location should be more than 500 micron. Step number 3. Astigmatic study. The normal value should be less than 1 diopter. Step number 4. Describe sagittal map based on the group classification A, B, C, D, skewed radial axis angle, as well as k-mean, and then define for yourself, for yourself if the patient uh, would be in normal, moderate risk or high risk group. Step number five and six, evaluate anterior and posterior elevation maps based on cutoff values. Step number seven, corneal thickness map. Describe for yourself if the patient has a dome shape, bell or globus shape or a normal concentric pattern. Step number eight, describe corneal thickness profiles. The normal, as you know already, should be gradual red slope with average less than 1.2. Step number nine, evaluate relative pachymetry and describe the patterns. Make sure that your cornea has a normal uh, pattern or document in case of suspicious or abnormal cornea. The normal value of relative pachymetry should be more or equal to minus 8%. And final step number 10, inter-eye asymmetry. The normal score, as I already said, should be between 1 and 3. And in this slide, I summarized altogether all those steps in case if you would like to save it and use it in your clinical practice for better and faster overview. This was the second part of Pentagon from the beginning. Hope you all enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe for upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and wishing you all a good day. And don't forget, stay positive, stay healthy. 
Bye.